YouTube afterward, just to make sure other people who couldn't make it have the opportunity to make it. Okay, good. It's in record. So there you go, Alan. Why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, thank you, Lorraine. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Jemakuya. I was born and raised in Tanzania, and uh, I am now living in the United States, but uh, I travel back and forth to go in Tanzania to um, lead my trips. So most of the time, if I have a trip, I usually accompany with my group. And um, back there, I work with um, uh, my brother-in-law, who actually have his own safari too, and uh, he owns uh, some of the campsites, they call it luxury uh, tented campsites. And uh, we use some of the fertility all the time because uh, some of our itinerary, uh, we combine uh, uh, lodges and uh, uh, those campsites. And the reason we do that is because we want our client to uh, feel uh, the difference between the lodges and uh, uh, the campsites. And when I'm talking about campsite, um, uh, later on on our slide, we will show you some of those facilities, how they look. Because uh, I think maybe some of you, you, you might think, oh, tent, tent is not good. No, those are, trust me, those are really um, luxury <laughs> tents. They're pretty much like lodges. The only thing missing at the campsite is a swimming pool. Um, uh, so my background is a safari guide and um, a uh, guide on Mount Kilimanjaro. I've been doing a safari for over 15 years, working for someone else before I started venture by myself and my brother. Uh, I've been guiding a lot of trips on the Serengeti and uh, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro over 85 times. And um, as you can see, my whole family um, in this sector of tourism. I love this sector, and that's why I want to, uh, to continue my long-time career as a travel uh, industry. So today we will talk about particularly Tanzania and especially safari. So uh, Lorraine, uh, Let me get go ahead. And Oops, wait, it went too far. Wait, there we go. Okay, so uh, uh, the, his, uh, the history of Tanzania. So um, before Tanzania, uh, there were two countries, uh, Zanzibar and um, Tanganyika. Back then, they called uh, Tanganyika. But uh, in uh, um, 19, oh, before I jump to it, so uh, the independence of Tanzania, we got independent from uh, uh, British in December of nine. Uh, 1961, and um, we do held elections for every five years. Uh, for we vote for uh, uh, president and the member of the parliament. So uh, after that, uh, in 19 the April uh, April of 1964, uh, these two country. Uh, Tanganyika and Zanzibar, those two presidents uh, um, uh, who were there in power back in the day, uh, the Honorable, uh, who's late right now, he died, um, uh, Julius Kambaraga Nyerere, and the president of Zanzibar, his name was Abed Aman Karume, they uh, agreed to form one country, and then they formed uh, the country uh, named now uh, Republican, uh, Republican of Tanzania. Go ahead, Lorraine. Yeah, I'm, ah, there we go. Oh, wait, yes. why does it keep skipping? It just skipped one, wait a minute. Why is it doing that? There we go. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. It may be just the link with Zoom or something. All right, so the climate, uh, uh, the climate in Tanzania, uh, mostly is uh, tropical and uh, usually on a coastal area because we are surrounded with uh, uh, on Indian Ocean. So on the coast side of the country is usually humid and uh, uh, it's hot. And then um, 
on uh, Central Plateau, uh, usually it's dry and cool during the night. On the mountain tend to be like Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, it can be up to zero degrees. So uh, uh, Chile is not a joke. Um, there's two rain seasons in Tanzania. Um, we have the long, long rain season, which is started in um, the beginning of March all the way to, into uh, May. And then the the short rain season is usually month of November, and it's only lasts like a one one month. So uh, during the high uh, uh, the long rain season, usually there's no much that you can do on the safari because it's too much rain, and uh, you don't want to stuck in the, in the in the mud because uh, some of the soil are really bad. So uh, you might stuck in the, in, in, in the mud <laughs> for uh, a while. So uh, And it's not fun because uh, the vehicle that we use, we can open the top for easy uh, viewing or you want to take a picture. So we open the top. So if it's rain, it's not really, not really good. So um, usually, usually I don't recommend um, uh, my customer to come to Safari. Um, in April and in, in, in May. Mm-hmm. Elegant. There we go. Uh, c- currency, Tanzania, currency, they use shillings. So uh, right now, those numbers, they can't change because they fluctuate. They go up and down. So uh, $1 right now is about uh probably like three thousand shillings in Tanzania. Hmm. So and they, they come with a different um uh, as you can see the notes there like uh, one thousand, five uh hundred, one or ten thousand and uh five hundred and two hundred. So they all, they also have coins but we don't have it there. Mm-hmm. And one thing to note there, when we went to Tanzania, we all thought we were going to change over our money, but pretty much no one wanted anything but U.S. dollars. So we, and and what, what ended up happening is a lot of us didn't have a lot of U.S. dollar cash because we didn't realize that. And now I always tell people, just bring your cash there because they'd rather have the U.S. dollars. Once you're there, you can't get any U.S. dollars. At the hotel desk, they let us write checks and give us U.S. dollars, but they weren't really thrilled about that, but they, they did do that for us. Um, so pretty much it's use U.S. money there. Are credit cards not accepted? Oh, you can, is. but if you're, if, you're, if you're shopping and bartering at all, you really want U.S. dollars. Okay rather than Tanzanian money. They don't really want it, the Tanzanian money. They, so clean US dollars is the best thing. Yeah, like Lorenz say, uh, a credit card accepted when you wanna buy, let's say, um, uh, the Tanzanites over there, or you wanna uh, buy something, not all of them, some show that they're allowed to use a credit card. And, and then also our, they they are, they are bank you know you can the ATM everywhere so you can take money whatever you want oh, there at are, the okay. ATM yes but the ATMs don't always have American dollars they usually have Tanzanian money right oh yeah. they do they do Lorraine the some do in bank, the city like, yeah in the city oh okay, in the city yeah oh yeah yes like in Arusha yeah. we could get American dollars out of the machines but once we are out oh. in the boonies <laughs> no oh yeah no you're right no no you can't they don't allow um uh, um credit card in the safari especially in the rural area no only in in um main city like arusha so there's a bunch of uh bureau de change and then uh, bigger bank like back let's see so you'll be able to go there and uh, do your atm there but we um our trip includes pretty much everything except alcohol. So you really don't need cash. We rarely ever took our wallets out. You know, you just don't need it. 
the only only time was like at the Maasai people or when we went to some of the um, shopping villages, but otherwise, you know. And you can use a credit card at the safari camp to pay for your bottles of wine or whatever you want. You can. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Just not used to carrying much cash. Well, you don't. You don't really need it. I mean, there okay. unless you're going to plan to do a lot of shopping. Go ahead, Alan. Sorry. Uh, no, it's good. So, uh, food. Uh, Tanzania, they eat a lot of beef. So they raise. They are known of uh, raise a lot of cows, uh, goats, sheep. So uh, they eat a lot of beef. It's kind of like beef soup. So um, their main popular. I mean, main popular meal there is um, this. Food kind of, they call ugali. It's um it's like polenta, polentas or oh, um like mashed potato, mashed potato, but it's really thick than mashed potatoes. So it's made with uh, corn most of the time. Or you can or the or you can use uh, corn cassava, uh, cassava flowers or corn flowers. It's really really nutrition for uh, uh, for for your body and um, also um, roasted banana, potato, chicken, rice, and fry, uh, french fries, uh, also very popular back in Tanzania. And this picture yes. over here, this is our group. Um, when we went in the tent, that's in the tented camps at the dining table, the food is fantastic. They have chefs at every one and the food was fantastic. And then up here, this picture, this was at the lodge that we use on the last night and it's a farm to table lodge. So they had the most amazing, um, it was like a buffet, but it was all these amazing fresh vegetables and fruits mm -hmm. and meats. It was just fantastic. But we also do box lunches often and if we want to go on a safari for many many hours we'll have them make a box lunch and so that was um charmaine sitting here on the top of the jeep eating her box lunch out in the serengeti one day just stop us if you have questions okay okay so uh economy uh tanzania economy depend mostly on tourism, agriculture, and mining, as well as manufacturing. So uh, you can see the income uh, every year before the COVID, uh, Tanzania received over uh, 1 million tourists every year in Tanzania. And they, that makes uh, the tourism industry big, big um, a role in the economy of Tanzania. And then the second... Um, sector that Tanzania depend on it's mining. Um, I'm sure you you all know you all know anything about uh, Tanzanites. Tanzanites mm -hmm. I've been in the mall uh, so so many different states I've seen a, t a lot of Tanzanites so whenever you see Tanzanites it's only come from Tanzania only so it is very very good stone and um, very expensive as well so Tanzania receiving a lot of foreign money because of uh, the uh, Tanzanites. Not only Tanzanite, but they also have very um, uh, gorgeous stone like ruby. I don't know if you heard of the name ruby. Yeah. Ruby is also ruby is also uh, a gemstone. Also, it's found in Tanzania as well. So those two sectors. Uh, Tanzania depend dependly very very um, uh, without Tanzania or tourism. Uh, I don't know how the, the government will, will will survive. So agriculture is the third uh, sector that um, uh, Tanzania depend on uh, for their economy. Uh, grow a lot of cotton, um, a lot of um, um, corn, um, coffee. Um, rice so they uh do imports those um uh, crops so the uh the the government also uh get um revenue from uh foreign um uh income 
and also manufacture. They do have uh, manufacturing that uh, they also um, manufacture their own stuff, like, you know, like they use cotton to, to um, uh, make clothes, um, uh, make their own stuff, uh, like oil. Uh, they also uh, grow uh, uh, corn flowers, or they make oil out of corn flowers. So, yeah, very, very good stuff. So, so those main uh, sectors there, Tanzania, without those main sectors, uh, I don't. I can't see it in the near uh, uh, economy uh, doing good, but because of these two sectors, I mean this four sector, Tanzania really doing not too bad, and e economically. And these um, these are pictures in Arusha. This was mm. like out the front window of our car, and then Arusha. This is Arusha. This is a market that we went past on our way to somewhere. I forget which which place we were going toward and then there's a lot of uh, we, there's coffee plantations too and the the hotel we stay on the last night has a coffee um farm there so do you know what this one was alan this picture i don't remember oh that yes we were on we were, we were on our way to tarangiri okay that's where we were i can't couldn't remember yeah mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the funny part that I usually love to talk about it. Um, what are the attraction there? Tanzania is famous because of um, uh, this um, attraction, uh, especially safari. Uh, Mount Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania, as well as beach in Zanzibar. So there's a very uh, white sand beach in Zanzibar where Usually people go there after they do safari or when they're done Kilimanjaro, they go there for uh, two or three days before they fly back to their country. So it's really good uh, places you have. You have to go on the, on the safari when you're in Tanzania. You have to go in Zanzibar when you're in Tanzania because uh, you don't want to go all the way there and you don't want to see all these that try. I know. See, I didn't go to Zanzibar, so now I have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done it. I regretted it when I got back. I, mean, I was like, darn. <laughs> some, some people, they usually don't have a lot of time. You know, some people yeah. can have maybe 10 days or a week or two weeks. So, uh, and there are so many things to do on a safari. You know, you can't do safari for like five days and then you say you finished There's so many um, uh, safari in Tanzania compared to any other any other country in Africa. Yep, and we take you to a lot of the safari areas. And this this elephant, he he was all covered in mud. That's why he looks so funny. He was he was just like over to the right here. They were there was a whole herd of elephants, and they were throwing mud on each other and they were playing they had babies it was great and then they came walking out and so i was in the jeep this was one of one half of our group was in front of us and then i was in the yeah. jeep behind and took this picture of this guy coming along walking toward our jeep they were what month amazing. was that this the was range? in april i mean um, august sorry august august, we were in august. august. yeah Yes. Alan, you do and you it, want? I don't think we have it in here. Do you want to tell them like what what seasonally, like what they see? You know, like February's baby season, and I don't think we have that in here. Do we? Uh, I I don't see, but we can we can talk right now. Uh, sure. So, uh, um, what I really want to when you go to Tanzania, uh, that's why you have us, uh, Lorraine, and myself, um. Because our itinerary, we made pick our itinerary based on animal location and the season. So I know it exactly what month. The, Sorry. Oh, Lauren. I was just saying. I know it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I was saying that our itinerary, uh, we make our itinerary based on uh, season and then also the location, because <laughs> this animal they they move from one part to another part they always they can't always stay in one part they constantly move 
And then uh, what made them move is because of uh, lack of food. So they have to move to another park where there's a lot of food for them. So constantly, if you go in Tanzania, let's say this month, and then a couple, couple months uh, later you go to Tanzania, you aren't going to see the same animal that you see. You'll probably see in another park because of the rain pattern. And uh, most, of, most animals depend on the rain most of the time. So uh, uh, if you want to see, let's say, uh, baby wildebeest, uh, if you go to Tanzania um, in December, January, February, you see a lot of baby born in Tanzania, especially on the southern part of the Serengeti. And that time also there's a big hit because there's a lot of uh, lion, uh, cheetah, uh, rhin, um, uh, leopard, because... It's availability of food for everybody. You know, there's grass for uh, uh, herbivores, uh, animals who graze on, on um, grass, and then also there's big cats that usually, you know, uh, depend on the, the carnivores. I mean, depend on the herbivores, I'm sorry. So, uh, and then also uh, uh, the major uh, event people go to Tanzania is the Great Migration. Um, the animal, especially the wildebeest and zebra, they move from um, Tanzania and then they go to Kenya. And why? It's because of um, the food. So during uh, June, uh, uh, they actually they started uh, congregates a uh, big number. I'm talking about thousands of wildebeest. They Hundreds start of on, <laughs> on on the on the southern on the southern part of the Serengeti. Uh, in January, February, by the time uh, they reach to uh, May and June, they are in the central Serengeti, and then so the big, the big, big number who are the bees when you go there in July, August, and September on northern part of Tanzania, where they're gonna cross the river called River Mara, and then they go in Kenya, because at that time. Uh, um, August, August, and uh, September usually it's dry season in Tanzania. So uh, um, then there's there's no much grass for those animals. So they move in Kenya where there's a lot of grass. So they do that annually. So they go to Kenya and then they go come back uh, in Tanzania uh, the beginning of uh, December. But the these animals face a huge, huge obstacles crossing the river. That river is loaded with African crocodiles. So a lot of them get killed on the way to Kenya, a ton of them. And what is crocodiles that they just hide and they kind of camouflage with the area. So the water is kind of look like, my, I mean, uh, gray. So they kind of, their skin, the uh, crocodile skin kind of, you know, camouflage, so it's not easy for the wildebeest. They, they can't see very well. So all they do is jump one, start jumping, and they jumping in single file. Once they get to the river, oh, man. So the crocodiles start jumping everywhere, and they kill as much as they can because they know this trip is only one. It happened once. Once they cross, they have to wait for another season again for them to come back and cross again so they kill as much as they can so you see a lot of body of uh, water bees and zebra just floating on the, on, on, on the river so it's, it's not a funny thing to see but it's, it's a nature it's amazing yeah. amazing nature Maybe. but yeah. kind of nasty <laughs> so a lot a lot of what? them get killed, but um, when they come back in Tanzania in December, January, a lot, of, a lot of them get born again. So it's something that it's continuation. It never, right. never stop. A lot of them, a lot of them die, and then when they come back, they're giving yeah. birth again in Serengeti. So it's it's a crazy natural wonder that's never gonna stop. Did someone have a question? Mm -hmm. I did. One of your previous slides said the best time to visit was June to October. By best, I mean, what criteria does is that? Say one more time. 
the, why is, why the, is J June to October the best time to go? Why would that be? Uh, the reason why I'm saying is because of the great migration. Those animals, they moved from uh, Serengeti. On, uh, they started, like I like said, beginning, they started um, on Central Serengeti on June. By the time they reached to uh, Mara River, where they're going to cross the river on the northern part of Tanzania, uh, uh, July, August, uh, the reason, if you go there in another month, let's say you want to go there in May or July, I mean, um, or April or February, you're not going to see that uh, migration. So they, because they move, you know, yeah. so, uh, but July, you don't June, see babies July, in February. So only, only for baby, but it's right. by up when they, when they reach to uh uh, July, they already um, not baby anymore. There's no birth anymore. So uh, a lot of them start moving, going toward uh, crossing the river. So it's only happening in July, June, early, late July, late, uh, early, early, early July, and uh, October. October you might see the tail, but the most. Uh, group already passed in uh, August and September. Mm -hmm. But in February, uh, mm -hmm. you're still going to see the same animals? So, February, just a different location? Same animal, just, just a different location uh, uh, on the southern part of the Serengeti. Normally, will be a lot of mothers and baby, uh, and, and also uh, zebra, because zebra and uh, uh, wild beasts, they always depend on each other. So they're always surrounding. They 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 all uh, graze uh, the same food. I mean, they graze on, uh, on grass. So they're always constantly together. So uh, you want to see babies? It'll be uh, January, February. But you want to see the big migration is uh, June, late June, uh, yeah, late late June um, into uh, late September. Okay. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome. So uh, Tanzania, there's uh, a few major airports, but these are the two major airports. Um, usually, um, uh, you fly from uh, here for New England. All people who, who live in England, they usually fly from Boston to uh, um, Amsterdam. And then Amsterdam, you go straight to uh, Kilimanjaro International Airport. Or you can do the same flight. You fly from uh, Logan. Uh, to Amsterdam, then to the rest of them. But uh, because most of the safari uh, start and end in Kilimanjaro, Arusha, so uh, we usually don't recommend go to the rest of them and then go to Arusha where uh, the safari start. So it's, it's going to be um, more expensive, you know, so we try to avoid to do that. And then also traveling time, it's, it's different. So um, most of our clients fly from uh, Logan to Amsterdam and then to Kilimanjaro International Airport. And you can fly, um, you can fly New York and do the same route. Yeah. Or you, some people do. Sometimes from New York you do Paris and then um, Arusha and then um, Kilimanjaro. So it depends on you know where you want to go. But the Boston, Boston Amsterdam. Kilimanjaro flight is really simple and easy to do. Yeah. Um, but like Dean, Dean lives in Florida. So, you know, we would do a different route for you, Dean, if, if you did it, unless you wanted to come up and go with your sister. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Get her to go. <laughs> she would like it. She liked Costa Rica. Oh. So yeah. how long are the, the flights? So the flight, let's say from Logan to Amsterdam and then Amsterdam to Kilimanjaro. So normally, it's uh, when I leave here, or oh, customer leave from uh, Logan uh, to Amsterdam, it's around about six, seven hours. Yeah. And six then, and from, yeah, and then from there uh, to Tanzania, it's another uh, seven hours, eight hours. So roughly about fifteen hours flight. You gotta. Um, a layout in, in Amsterdam, usually like maybe three, three, four hours you wait there and then 
get time to walk on the street, the city, I mean, um, the airport there. Yeah, you get yeah, to kind it's of. Not bad. It's about, I think it was about a three hour layover. And, um, and then you get on, on the flight, the next flight is a KLM flight. So it's Delta and then KLM, but the, yeah. they're partners. But I'll tell you that yeah. KLM flight, I, I have never been fed so many times. <laughs> they were, it was quite an amazing flight the one going to Arusha. And then home, you're doing it in the evening. So it was like a, everybody just went to sleep. It was a night flight to Amsterdam. You get to Amsterdam in the morning. And then you, you know, we ate breakfast in the airport and then got on our flight to Boston and we were home in like at noon. So they're pretty nice flights and that's why we like them. They're not always the cheapest flights, but they're definitely the most relaxing of all the flights you know so but we can sometimes get them less expensive in other routes but it's kind of the best route okay let me just click here uh here we go oh yeah so this is it so we don't have yeah, to go through yeah, this again yeah. but that's the flight it, it, that it, you would take exactly yeah so like lorraine say uh um kelly m and um delta they work together right now, so you can fly right. from here, uh, Logan, to uh, Amsterdam with K uh, with uh, Delta, O Kellyam, and then on the way back is Kellyam uh, to um, Amsterdam, and then from there back again with the Delta. Oh, they also Kellyam that are coming from um, uh, Amsterdam to Logan. Yeah, sometimes you do, but yeah. So they're code shared. No. Correct. So uh, you definitely need a uh, whoever a passport. Um, passport is you know required because you need to get a visa to go there. So uh, and um, uh, at least um, before your uh, visa expire, at least you need to have at least six months uh, uh, before your visa expire. And uh, your passport expire. Um, the passport. I'm sorry, passport. So uh, once you arrive there. Uh, you get a visa stamp on your passport, and it costs a hundred dollars per person. Yeah. So, but before people used to send their passport to the embassy of Tanzania in New York or in uh, uh, Washington D.C. to get a visa, uh, but not right now you don't have to do that. You can um, arrive there, and then you get your visa once you arrive. And it costs a hundred dollars per person. And so they, this, they usually this thing that says usually, obtain before arrival is not applicable any longer. No, that you can get uh, it online beforehand, or you can get it at the airport. Didn't they change that, Alan? And now you have to get it online. I think I read that somewhere, or is that a different? Uh, they, it, no, it's just an option. They add another option on that. You can okay. get a. A visa online, but usually I had for the previous the previous customer, the two customers that I had, they had a they tried to get a visa online, but they say the website wasn't a friendly user, so yeah. they had hard time, so they decide not to waste their time. So uh, uh, they come in Tanzania and they get their visa when they arrive when they arrive there. We were laughing. Uh, it, we only we only had one person get it online. And when we went through the airport, she was delayed more than all of us that got it when we got there. We waited for her because she bragged all the way there about how she already has it and she's going to zip. She was so worried about, well, I'll get out of the airport before the rest of you. And what if the driver's not there and all that? And she ended up being yeah. the one that was delayed. She was on a different line. And I don't know why, but she got delayed. So, but it's very easy. You just go to the window and you just give them your passport and you, there's a paper you fill out. You bring two pictures of yourself, passport pictures, and you hand it to them. They make you a visa, put it in your book and you're done. And, and then the idea of sending your passport to, uh, to, to the embassy in Washington, there a possibility that you might not get your passport on time. So you don't want to waste paying all this kind of money and then you don't have your passport ready by the departure time. Yeah, so, I wouldn't do it. You would def definitely, yeah. if the online form doesn't work, then just yeah. you know, get I, it when you get I there. 
I would rather try the online uh, than send your passport to the embassy. Yeah, definitely. Any country that has it like that, that's... <laughs> and the $100 fee, so if you don't do it online ahead of time, and they take credit cards at the airport? No, uh, you, have, no. you have to bring two clean $50 bills, basically. Yeah. Okay. Oh, a hundred dollar bill. Or a hundred dollar bill, but clean and not, you know, because they have a lot of counterfeiting issues in Africa. So they yes. are they always want your bills to be like not used. So you so, do that ahead of time. So crisp. So so it yeah, needs to be crisp, crisp. And clean. Yeah. They can't be written on or wrinkled yeah. or anything. Yeah. Okay. And then if, if you were to do the visa online, like is it a there's there a recommended like do it a month before do it a before uh, I, a, yeah i think they say like uh, a month four weeks in advance so uh you just want to make sure that you get it on time and then they will send you a code and then you that code you go online and then you see if your visa is is already yeah uh, process do they are they only good for x amount of months uh, no. They're good forever? Oh, see, I'm, okay. So Wait, there's not I'll a problem. Tell you, yeah. I, have, I think I have it in my passport. Let me see what, what the expiration is on this. I think it was this passport. Maybe it's my other passport. Uh, no, it must have been uh, my no, I, no, I think it's, I think it's six months. Six months, I think. I, that's what I was going to say, yeah. six months. Okay. Six months, yeah. Yeah, once after six months, you're going to have to redo it again. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so uh, uh, travel information, you know, like vaccination, uh, you have to you check uh, with CDC or your um, uh, uh, health healthcare provider. And uh, they usually have like a travel clinic that will tell you exactly um, what you need to go or what you need to have. Uh, what kind of vaccination do you you need to have? But mostly, um, I know you you need to have like uh, malaria pill. Uh, that I, that I know definitely um, that you take like um, I think it's uh, two or one one two days before you fly to Tanzania. You have to take right. uh, uh, malaria pill with you, and then you continue to take every day one pill a day until you leave Tanzania. Um, but there's no vaccinations required. They're all just suggested. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to have anything. They're just suggested. So it's up to you, you know, and your doctor on whether or not you want to get any of them. Right. And, uh, and I call that way. Go then ahead, we, Lori. yeah, we require that you get travel insurance if you travel with us because we don't want anybody stuck in Tanzania that. that that's break their leg or something and you want to go be airlifted and we don't want someone stuck so we require you to have travel insurance very important because uh you know something may happen even though uh i've never had any issues with um somebody get injured or something like maybe luggage get stolen or uh delayed but you always you go on overseas you know, you want to protect yourself. You want to protect your belonging, and uh, and also you are um, your flight. You know, because uh, if you have insurance and something happens, they might be able to uh, reimburse you. So, yeah. flight very, delays. very, very yeah. important. You know, right? Yeah, and and Lorraine can help you with the travel insurance. You, you, you feel good about it. So I use Allianz, which I think is you know, like the number one insurance provider for travel insurance. They're really good. They've been phenomenal through COVID, I have to say. <laughs> Everybody that had them was like, thank goodness I had Allianz because they made so many exceptions and helped people in so many ways. They, That's great. They were amazing, amazing. Did you have lots of problems? Or actually you didn't go at this time of year, but is February more prone because it's in between the two um, wet seasons, it's two uh, lots of mosquitoes? Uh, you know, it's funny because uh, people think there's a lot of mosquitoes in Tanzania, 
I never seen a mosquito on a safari. And uh, <laughs> most of my clients, they say, oh, Alan, you know what? Yeah, um, they say this mosquito, but, you know, they, um, in, in the tent, they have like a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, mosh pen, mosh, yeah. yeah, mosh pen on, um, on the, on the, on the window. So they usually leave their, I mean, the those like with the screen only. So no problem at all. And, and they, you know, have them on around the, all your beds and all the hotels and everything. Right. They all have mosquito netting in their beds. Yeah. In the beds, all, all of them, you have mosquito nets. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the, I didn't know the, if it was prevalent with based on what you said about the malaria pills. Yeah, I mean, I would say I would say the winter months might. I mean, the our winter, the um, rainy months might have more. But in August, again, we never saw a mosquito. But we all took it just to be sure we were safe. But even in South, when I was in South Africa in January, um, I took my malaria medicine. But again, I never saw a mosquito there. <laughs> but you know, you just never know. Got it. Uh, on the on the coast area, like let's say in uh, in Dresden, uh, because the coast usually is humid there, and then mosquito like like the hot hot season on I mean, the hot area places, like especially in the coastal area. So when you're planning to travel in Dresden, I definitely recommend it to have a malaria pill with you. Yeah. And then. Tipping, as it says here, is you know customary, ten to fifteen percent tipping. Um, just nor it's normal there. No. It's more like the U.S. for for tipping and stuff. You know, some countries you go to and they're not big tipping countries, but in a, in um, Tanzania you definitely tip, just like you would in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this is, oh, go ahead, Lauren. <laughs> I was just going to, these are all, actually all of the pictures you're seeing are the pictures I took when I went yeah. there. So that's how amazing your pictures will be. I mean, it's just, you know, just an amazing, amazing yeah. time. I mean, you're there for photography. That's what people go there for, to see the wildlife and take pictures. And so we took our time. We stayed as long as anyone wanted to, you know, to get capture these pictures. You just stay and watch the animals. You're never bored for one second. <laughs> you know, there's just always something happening around. And and your guides like Alan and his brother and the drivers, they I don't know how the heck they I guess it's from experience. They'll see yeah. stuff, you know. There, you know, look over there. There's a leopard, and everybody's going, "Where, where, where? Look, what?" And it's right in front of your face, and you don't even see it, but they can see it. And then, then you realize it's there. And then, of course, everyone grabs their binoculars. You definitely don't want to go without binoculars and cameras, and just start taking pictures. And it's an amazing experience. But Alan, what did you want to say? I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was going to. Um... Because I have um, uh, evidence from my previous customer. Some already went to South Africa and they come to Tanzania. So Tanzania is a game changer for uh, wildlife safari. As a matter of fact, Tanzania voted a um, couple years in a row that they are concluded that Tanzania is the best wildlife African safari in, in, in Africa. So when they go to South Africa and they come to Tanzania, they see a huge change. So Tanzania is the best for safari. And I'm not saying to brag, but it's a fact. If I, yeah. and I went on safari in South Africa and I've been on safari in Tanzania, it's night and day different. So oh. it depends if somebody want, you know, wants to consider South Africa, the, the reason most people would go to South Africa versus Tanzania is because South Africa has other things like people will go there and spend a few days in the wineries. Yeah. They might go down to see the penguins on the Cape of Good Hope. They, you know, want to swim in the Indian Ocean or something. I mean, it's a different kind of thing. Or they want to also see a couple of other countries that are attached, you know, very close, like the Victoria Falls. So then 
you do it, but your safari time usually then is like three days. And the safaris in South Africa are much, their, their reserves are much smaller and much more managed. So they feel a little bit more like Disneyland. When you're yes. in Tanzania, you feel like you're in the bush. I mean, you're in the mm -hmm. wild. It's because they protected that Serengeti, especially. You, you know, you're bouncing on the roads just like you feel like you're in some kind of, you know, movie. I mean, it's very, very different. So it's not that we didn't see all the same animals. We saw pretty much the big five. We saw them. I saw them in South Africa. I saw them in Tanzania. But the but the but the feeling of it was very different. It was, it felt much more formal and much more organized in, in the way the, the safari is run and seeing the animals and all that. They, it just felt more contrived almost, I guess is the word. We kept laughing. We, we kept going, oh, they just come out in the morning and they put these little, you know, animals out on the path make sure we're gonna see them that's how kind of it felt it wasn't like that but that's kind of how it felt but in Tanzania they're just like everywhere especially on in the Serengeti I mean but all the all of the other parks too were it's much more more of a wild feeling to it more like authentic feeling so it just depends on what you want if you're you really want to go wildlife viewing then Tanzania if you want to see other parts like wineries and things like that, then South Africa is a, a, a nice option, you know? And the reason I don't usually send people to Kenya is Kenya does have yellow fever issues. So it's, yeah, if you're gonna go to Kenya, yellow. you're gonna go to Tanzania, they're right next to each other and they all have to share the same reserves. So why bother with the shots when you don't need them? You know, why not go to Tanzania? I think Tanzania's had less um, problems too um, politically and stuff than Kenya. So why bother is the way I look at it. That's true. That's true. So that just gives you a little rundown of the different places, you know. So when you're out on <laughs> safari, like approximately how long a, a time frame is it? Like do you go out like in the morning and then, you know, I saw you sometimes do box lunches or do you like go back to I'll say your camp and then do another one and the reason I'm asking is like okay where are you doing bathroom breaks <laughs> uh, so um, that's, that's a, a really good question um, so uh, uh, what make me a part different with other tour company is um, I don't have like a time limit. I don't have like um, some company, let me say like this, some company, they have restriction of uh, driving. They don't want to spend more gas. And then it also, uh, they don't want um, to uh, put a lot of mileage on their car. So they limit how far they can drive on the game drive. So um, back to your question is uh, we usually do uh, – uh, two game drive a day. We go early in the morning because early in the morning is when most animal act. And then, so we do that. We go there. We do um, a few hours, like maybe go like the whole, maybe half a day and after, break, after breakfast. And then some other time we will decide maybe uh, we want to go like the whole day. So like Lorenzo, we're going to, we take the lunch boxes with us. So we don't have to rush and come back. There are there are some uh, toilet facility on the, on on the, on a picnic site, and uh, sometimes maybe it's far away from from um, uh, the picnic site. So uh, we usually like guide me go outside and look if it's safe for the customer to go. So you just go um, outside, and then everybody else on the other side, and you do your thing. You know, especially <laughs> like now number one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's not a problem. And um, uh, and most time we we go for a second game drive. Usually we come back on the lunch time. We uh, have lunch at a camp on time, and then you take maybe uh, two hours nap uh, just to digest your food. You can 
stay at the campsite, you know, enjoy some drinks, or you can go in your yeah. in your room. And <laughs> uh, the internet there, you can. Yeah, everybody uh, does their Facebook uh, posts and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Post. You can make a phone call through. Uh, mostly, uh, people use WhatsApp app. You can call anybody uh, in the world. We're using WhatsApp app. And then after that, we're going back. And that, the second one is optional for uh, everybody. If you want to go back to the camp, I mean, to the uh, game drive, because that time, again, this, the sun, it's not hot anymore. And uh, a lot of animals, again, act uh, late uh, evening because during the uh, daytime, you know, it's hot. So um, a lot of animals tend to hide in the shade, so it's hard for them to come out because of the sun, so they hide. And we don't want to bother them, so we want to go there when they actually act, which is early in the morning and late in, in, in the afternoon. But we, our group, when we went, we stayed out almost all the time, all day. I mean, we just, the group decided, we had two Jeeps, so so one time, one of the Jeeps went back early, so people that wanted to go back could go back. But we went more distant than, you know, from from the camps, and we just explored, and we, we had a yeah. fabulous time. It was just like, you just get so addicted. You're like, oh, maybe we'll see this. Let's go look for this, you know, and you just start hunting yeah. for the different animals that you want to see. And then, you know, it, it's just, it's just like, like I said, there's always something going on. There's lots to, to see. So yeah, the, right, one, right. the one thing you can't do in Tanzania, though, are night drives. No, that's correct. You and you're can't. allowed, yeah. they are allowed to do them in South Africa. So I did go out at night in South Africa, but I don't know. I mean, they don't do it in Tanzania because they're trying to preserve the, 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 like respect the that's when animals get a lot of their food and you don't want to be out there with they bring out these big lights and they shine them down and you can see like we saw um a lion get a giraffe kill it and eat it with the big lights in um south africa but and then we saw the um the hyenas come and eat i mean it was interesting it was really interesting it was amazing, actually, but um, you can't see that in Tanzania that way, you know. Uh, the, um, the, the, Lorraine, I just want to uh, add a little there. Um, on a game drive, which we don't, we don't, we don't do a game. We don't go on a game reserve. Uh, game reserve is when the hunting is allowed. Uh, uh, people do hunt during the night. And uh, it's not really good because they, they might blind the animal with those lights. The, the light is very bright, you know, so they kind of bother the animal. <laughs> so it's not a good bite on a safari. No, I, I don't recommend do a, a game drive during the night. So most, most of the people that I know, they do a safari during the day. Yeah. And uh, this is me right here. And uh, some of my clients, yeah. <laughs> so Sorry. hunting is allowed? Hunting, hunting is allowed because not in the national park. They have a game reserve. So there, there are special parks that are allowed it's, to hunt. Yeah, they, yeah, they are it's, allowed. It's to not wild, in the maintain nation. the wildlife, right? Isn't it? It's like a maintenance thing, the hunting. Isn't it? Didn't you explain that? Isn't the hunting done... To kind of maintain the health of the animals like it's there they just don't go out and shoot regular animals typically no 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 regular animal um not in like i say there's there's a game reserve in the uh national park so on the national park there's no um hunting allowed they have a game reserve where hunting is allowed so uh, people can have a license, and not all animals, they usually pick few animals, and because of that, they want to reduce the number of animals right. too much. So um, they allow hunting. Yeah, it's like population control kind of thing. Correct. 
Yeah. But so, we would just you, be going to the national park? Not yeah, we, to, okay. Yeah, we only go to the national parks. Yeah. Only national park. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to uh -huh. pack orange. No, no. no. <laughs> and this this is interesting. This is the difference between some of the parks. You see how this was all of my pictures, right? So we were there in August. So the Serengeti was very dry because that's mm. when why they're all migrating to Kenya. But mm. here is the, I think this is in the Nurangoro crater, which is all green and lush. So and then there's grasses like in Arusha and Tarangiri, it was more grassy and green, but it's interesting. And that's why we like to go to the different parks because you'll get different, um, you know, you'll get different vegetation, you'll get different birds, you'll get different wildlife yeah. by seeing yeah. the, the different parks. Yeah, um, every, every national park, it has its own unique habitat. So, some like Lorenzo in Gorongoro, in there, there's a lake, there's a forest in there, there's um, uh, a swamp in there. So all kind of habitat in in every national park. So you go to Arusha National Park, you see uh, uh, kind of uh, vegetation is different. Um, when you go to Gorongoro, it, it's a different, or you go to Serengeti. Serengeti, mostly grass, uh, it's plain grassland, and there's no a lot of trees in Serengeti. Mostly it's an open area with maybe uh, shrubs most of the time. And maybe here and there you might see a uh, uh, woodland. But uh, uh, every national park is different. And um, on our itinerary, um, we, uh, we want to see all the national park. Other tour company, they don't want to do that. And here, you will see that they might do only three national parks because they don't want to spend more money on uh, paying for um, um, what do you call um, entrance fees to go on national park. It's a lot of money for for each client. It's about probably like uh, eighty five dollars a person. So they don't want to spend that kind of money. So they limit how far they can go on the safari. They might do three or four, but for us, we do all of five of them. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't um, bother us, and, uh, and yeah, we want everybody. I'm Go sorry, on. sorry, Alan, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. I was gonna say sometimes we don't do Serengeti, we do Manyara. So it depends on where the animals are, like we mentioned. Um, Correct. But this is basically, I mean, if we can do, if there's lots going on in Manyara, we'll add, we add in Manyara. Um, or we spend extra days in some other park because there's more going on there, you know? So that could change based on what time of year you go. I just go with uh, yeah. seven. So this is, we're take, we're like kind of overtime. So I don't wanna, um, are, are you guys okay if we just continue or we can go a little- Well, um, I'm gonna have to, to leave, um, but I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, how many days is this is the tour well, there we go <laughs> it's it's 10 yeah. days 10 yeah 10 days but i would recommend you get there a day early so you you're not arriving on the first safari day because that was exhausting i did that and a lot of other people did not and they were really happy that they had gone one day early okay and um you said um, at the, our last meetup that you actually are planning a trip in February. Yeah, it's in, um, I think it's my next slide here. Of 22, not 21. Of 22, yeah. yeah. 22, yeah, where am I? Oh, wow, we have a lot to go. We talk too much, sorry about that. Yeah. Well, um, maybe we can do it another time. 11 through 20th on, in 2022. And okay. I did February right. because I did baby season since the last time we did migration. So. Yeah. And who would, oh, so I know that um, Alan would be our, be the tour guide. Or yeah. his brother, or his brother's Frank. brother. And then yeah. do you go on these trips? If I can, I try to, but I don't, okay. if I don't okay. go, I, I told my husband he might get to go the next time because he hasn't gone yet. Um, okay. But you know, 
yeah. I mean, if I can, it depends on how many people go um, to whether or not I can go as well. Okay. Well, yeah, I was just kind of wondering about that. And um, okay, and I see the price. drivers also. So there's a driver and a guide in each Jeep. Okay. So, yep. And I'm, all, I'm always there with the group all the time. So yeah, make sure know. everything is go safe and smoothly. Yeah. Okay. And you need a deposit by next year? Well, we're say what, what we're offering what? just because we need to understand how many people might want to go so yeah. we can start making plans. Uh, we're offering a dollar deposit just so that you tell us okay. I'm serious, I want to do it. And then you okay. can wait till April 1st to make the okay. $499 remaining. Because okay. on, that way we can get through COVID and figure out what the winter is going to bring for all right. of us, you know. So, but we kind of want to know who's like seri really serious as opposed to just thinking about it. So the dollar okay. helps. Okay. You know? I know it sounds silly, but it just, it just says, no, oh, yeah, no, I'm committed. Yeah, you, know? you, you, ex you explained that last time. I understand that. Yeah, so. it just helps. And then all once right. you make your deposit, it's non-refundable because we have to front all the money to these hotels uh, and lodges. Okay. And yeah. So yeah. we can't really refund the money if you can't go. I can sometimes try to find someone to replace you if you can't go. You know, maybe somebody else has been waiting or whatever. But um, that's the luck of the draw on that one. Okay. So Alan, uh, she's booked for February. So you said, do you feel that that's a good time for to travel? Even though the babies are being born? I mean, I would want to go there and see everything I could possibly see. February. I would, de I would, de I would definitely recommend February. That's my, uh, okay. it's green season. I love the green season because everything is green and uh a lot of animals too. So um, yeah, February. If you have time to February, do it in February. If you have time to do in uh, July or August for uh, Great Migration, um, you make a call. But we are flexible, and we can make we can tell you a trip whatever you want. It. Okay. Okay. And just do it. Yeah, you can. If you can't do the February, but you you know, want to do it another time, we may be able to find other people who are interested and can get another small group. We don't need huge groups to do it because we're not a big core company trying to fill space. Right. So, you know, we can do it with two people. We can do it with four people. It depends upon how many people we can get at a, at a time. So like, let's say you want to go with someone else, but can't make the February date. Just let, let us know and we'll make another arrangement. Okay. Yeah. And this, All right. this, to give you a quick view, these are the camps. This is what the, yeah. so you see there's normal mm -hmm. furniture. There's even walls, but on the other side of the wall is, is canvas. And then they're all screened. Yeah. And then the guys come and completely zip you in at night and they give you a whistle. So if you need to, you have a bathroom in your camp. This is the bathroom, it's very nice. Yeah. Shower, toilet, everything. But if you need to go back to the main lodge for some reason, you blow the whistle, they'll come and get you and take you up oh, to the okay. lodge okay. in the night because they don't want you walking in the dark by yourself. No, no. But that's how it looks. And then this is the dining tent. These, there's the great guys are great. You know, they take good care of you. And then at night we have campfires usually, which are great. That was great. Yeah. Okay. I have a question about bringing the box lunches. Is that not uh, an attractant to the animals? I uh, say one more if, time. If, sure. if you if you have food in your jeep, is that not? Yeah. Oh, I did see a large cat on the hood of a jeep. <laughs> yeah. so, did uh, they want? That, that, did they want us, or did they want the box? No, lunches? no. <laughs> so uh, no, no. That's the uh, that's a cheetah. They love to do that because uh, in the Serengeti is. It's an, there's no end, so you can't see the beginning of the end, and it's all grassland. And uh, so what the cheetah does, it happened many times, they jump on the, on the top of the hood, and just to see where the visibility for them, they want to see where the gazelle are. Oh, it's a so vantage point. There. Okay. Exactly, vantage point. Think of it One this thing. way. They, this yeah. is the way they explained it to me when I was in South Africa. All of these animals now, because of how long they've had reserves in Africa, all of these animals were born and raised on the reserves. So they know what a Jeep is, but to them, 
a Jeep is like another animal. So they're not afraid of the Jeep. But if you put your arm out of the Jeep or your head out of the Jeep, that might attract them because they're saying, whoa, what's that, right? But they think the Jeep is just like another animal. They've had them all their lives since they were born. They've seen these Jeeps driving around. Right, Ellen? That's kind of, so they're not really afraid of the Jeep. They just don't, you, you don't get out and walk around unless Alan lets you know that it's safe. <laughs> he goes this, out this, <laughs> this is the, uh, in Tanzania, uh, the cheetahs do that because of the, because they don't, they're not interested with people or when you are eating in the car, they're not interested with your food. They're only interested to, to see their, uh, uh, where their gazelle is. So once they see, they jump on the top on, on, on the ground and they start uh, crawl or running where they see the animal. And that's yeah. the only reason. And then the cheetah can't, cheetah can't climb on a tree because they are not um, made for that basis flying. I mean, leopard, leopard uh, um, are able to climb the tree because of the attractive clothes that they have, while cheetah can't climb a tree. So they can just jump on, on um uh, on the jeep of the on the, on the top of the on on top of the of the jeep, mm-hmm. so they can see where the, they go there is, but they don't bother you at all. They'll come and walk like right that we had lions walking yeah. right up by the wheel wells of the jeep, and you look down and you're taking all these pictures. It's great, but they're not interested in who's in it in the jeep. Kind of, you know, it's yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. It is. I couldn't, some of those pictures were amazing. How close you yeah, are. Yeah, these are the amazing yeah. pictures. Oh Very yeah, they nice get pretty pictures. close. Yeah. I had a good camera. I, actually the driver, our driver, um, Ollie, he works a lot with photographers. And so he has this amazing camera. And when we were there, he let me use it. So that's why I got these amazing pictures. I had a pretty decent Nikon, but he had a lens like gigantic. I didn't know really what I was doing, but I tried my best, you know, but these, this is the migration, the migration, seeing yeah. the migration is really mm-hmm. breathtaking. I mean, they're marching. I wanted to go and loudspeakers and play marching music. It was like, they just march. They're just, they're just going. It's like, it's a, quite a sight. I was but, there in February. It was a lot of wildebeest. <laughs> They're all dropping I'll, I'll their count, babies. I count more than a thousand wildebeest, yes, in favor. Yeah. yeah. So you'll still mm-hmm. see a lot of wildebeest. They'll just be having babies instead. And right. then this is real quick. They, you know, we include all your ground transportation, three meals a day, um, snacks too, you know, all your tented camping facilities, all your entrance fees, campsite fees, your guide, your driver, cooks, porters the vehicle. The only thing we don't include is alcohol, um, airfare, gratuities, and then the visa fee and insurance. So those are the only things. Otherwise, like I said, you never really take your wallet out. You don't need to. I mean, and with, with the insur- what the with gratuities, I collected them all ahead from people. We just told people what, you know, what it would be. And then I gave them to Alan and he dealt with them at each camp. I didn't even do it. So, and I forget what it, how much it was, but I, I could recalculate it and let you know, but it wasn't, you know, exorbitant, but you, the guide, your guide and your driver actually make the most, the, the most gratuity because they're mm-hmm. with you every day, all day, and they do a yeah. job. We also um, we also visit the um, Maasai when we're there, which is really quite a great experience. I think I have a picture here. Um, where are the yeah we visit the Maasai and that is a right great there. experience. Yeah. <clears throat> They're lovely people, and then we. Yeah. Um, we even stopped because the group wanted to stop so we can offer this as an option. We stopped at the Leaky Museum on our way home okay. on the last day. Um, it's not their main one, it, but it is one of their one where they still are excavating. And we had the park ranger come and tell us all about the excavations and we could 
stand on the cliff like and look down and they were still looking for remains of you know humans and animals from you know ancient times it was kind of interesting but it's a it's just I don't know. Did they open the new section of that museum yet, Alan? The one they were building when we were there? Yeah, I was there in, fe in February and we visited. It's different. When you go there, Lorraine, you 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 you, you might um, not recognize that place. It must be amazing. They build, yeah, the, the main building is very very beautiful and luxury. Yeah, nice nice place. Because when we went, it was kind of like a little rinky-dink museum, but the guy that told us all about excavating and stuff was fantastic. He was so interesting, the archaeologist. Yeah. But the um, but they were building a museum there, a bigger one. So now they have that open. Yeah. So yeah, it's worth yeah. stopping at. So we usually do that on the way out of the Serengeti, going back, you know, going back home to the, to the lodge, lodge. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last night we always stay in um in this really nice lodge here. Uh where is it? This one. We stay in this lodge, which is a okay, really yeah. nice. It's a little more luxurious and it's kind of nice to just go there and you know, feel like you're in a really expensive lodge. You know, it's just kind of nice. After you've been driving all day in the gritty, you know, Serengeti dirt and dust. We also have a um, school that we've adopted there. So we do ask people to bring donations and we call the school ahead and find out what they need. Because sometimes they need things like yarn and stuff because the kids make things that they sell. Um, it's a really cool school. I mean, it was really a great experience and you meet the kids and it, it was a lot of fun. It's in Arusha. So we brought like um, backpacks and pens and paper and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's that's like it. And we're we're rushing now because we want to make sure you get everything. Oh, and then here's if you want to go to Zanzibar. Yeah. The other thing to note that if you don't want to do the full ten day, I have had people do like an eight day safari and then spend two days in Zanzibar before they went home. But that wouldn't be the group one. That would be something if you, let's say you just wanted to go with a couple of friends and you want to do a, a shorter safari, you know, we don't recommend less than eight days because there's so much to see, but you can then take a few days and go to Zanzibar on, before you go home. It's a little island, so you have to fly there. You fly to Dar es Salaam, then you fly to Zanzibar. I, or can you go direct from oh, Arusha? I forget. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, you, you can. You can fly direct from, there. You can fly direct from Serengeti to, to Zanzibar. Right. And then we flow fly then you fly back and to Dar Then you fly and back to Dar es Salaam and then flight. connect your flight. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there that's all beaches and resorts, but it also has an amazing um um I forget what the name of the town the town there, Alan, which was a tr uh, when they trade slave trading uh, town, right? Uh, Stone Town. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. historic. You can see that there. It's yeah, that's historical um, city. Yeah. Yeah. Other mm -hmm. questions anybody have? So on the on the campsites, I didn't quite catch I'm back on bathrooms. So I heard that uh, you need a so the bathroom is a is like in a separate tent? No, it's in your own tent. So it's just oh. like a hotel room. Oh, you okay. Your, you have your chairs and your desk and your and your bed. Shower. And then like over over here, let's say, would be this bathroom. So you have like a, a vanity and stuff. They give you bathrobes, um, towels. Then you have a formal shower in one of the doors, and then the other door is the toilet area. But everyone and it's flush toilets. And um, the showers are running hot, normal hot water, although they are fed by guys who go up on the roof and put the water in when you are ready to take your shower, you just give them five minutes notice and they bring the water in and then, but you have a normal 
shower, normal shower head. It's very, it's very nice actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I just was checking because I heard the whistling in, in the middle of the night if you needed to get up and I'm like, okay, if I need to get uh, to the bathroom in the night, am I gonna have to whistle for someone no, or is no, it just, no, okay, no. All right, all right. No, and you have your own lights and everything. It's all normal light switches. They're, they are solar, so if, you know, you at, at night you might hear the generator running, you know, but um, it's it is all yeah. normal lighting and everything. There's it's just like a hotel room. It's well, no, I mean it, it looks it looks very nice. Again, I'm focused on bathrooms, so yeah. so that's <laughs> but you do fine. when you're out on safari, you do go out in the you know desert. I mean, or whatever. It's not really desert, the bush. But we yeah. we typically we would just say we have to go, and then you know Alan would they would pull over in a safe place, and then we would all take turns going, you know, as privately as we could. <laughs> okay, yeah, and, and I I don't mind that as long as you know I'll say it's sort of built in, you know, like okay, it's sort of built in, like they know. All right, you know, in three hours, you know, we start off you know, depending upon how long, if we're going to be out all day, oh, well, then we may, might need to find a spot soon. You know what I mean? You just raise your, you just go, hey, Alan, yeah. I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Usually when one person says it, everybody's like, yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, me too. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first one raising my hand. Probably, yeah. We don't care. We, we, I mean, we stop as often as you need. That doesn't matter. How does that work, though? You said you don't leave your, you don't stick your arm out of the Jeep. So how do the guys get out first and they check the area and make sure there's no animals in the area. They also, they know where to stop, you know? So oh, cool. yeah. they might say to you, we need, I'm sorry, Alan, I keep talking over you. They might no, say no, you, no, we no. need 15 minutes to get to this area where we know no animals are or something. And then you say, okay, oh, okay. okay. you know? Okay, it's not like they have to carry guns. No, okay. they, they don't. They okay. carry them in South Africa, but I think it's just for show. <laughs> They don't carry them in Tanzania. Yeah, I don't want to hurt them, but I also don't want to get, you know, jumped while I'm relieving, <laughs> relieving myself. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> no and, and you're not going fast, so it's right there. You just have to um, go behind the Jeep and, you know. We just okay. take turns. <laughs> okay, yeah, and and uh, one other thing I wanted to clarify about the whistle. Um, every, every tent has a whistle on the door. And the reason behind is maybe something happened to you. Maybe you got sick or um, uh, you forgot something in your main um, dining uh, tent. And uh, we do not recommend you to just walk around because nighttime, that's the habitat of animals. So uh, it's, it's very dangerous for you to walk by yourself. So uh, you just blow the whistle and then someone will come and check what's going on. And um, that's the main reason of having that whistle there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe something, yeah, you bothering you, you know, <laughs> you feel maybe this, uh, the uh, animal or something. <laughs> you, so, uh, you do hear animals all night. You'll hear the oh, lions prowling. You'll hear the, yeah. you hear, and my roommate got really freaked out about it. I finally made her wear earplugs. But she couldn't, she woke up all night long. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'm like, of course we're laying, you know, we're in the Serengeti or we're in, we're in their we're in their turf. It was really, yeah. I loved it. It was so cool. You can hear the when the lions like go after their kill, they they don't really growl, they like purr. It was a really weird sound. It took me a few nights to even realize that it was a lion. And so they said, no, no, that sound is a lion. I wondered, it was like a purring sound, but you can hear the birds and the monkeys. I mean, it's, I loved it. I thought it was, that's why I was there, you know? <laughs> so from a, like, yeah. if I'm bringing electronics and I need to charge them, um, mm -hmm. Would I have to bring like solar powered, you know, uh, chargers or? No, no. Um, well, go ahead, Lauren. You can charge them in the main tent. So there's a big charging station there and everybody just brings their stuff in and charges them. The, okay. only, the only thing that we did have some difficulty with that, you know, we need to know well in advance is if you need a CPAP because some people have them and um, because this 
these are all on generators, we need to give the camps advance notice. There, that's that's a lot harder to deal with. Um, it can be done though. We had like three people with CPAPs. I mean, we could do it, but we needed to have to give them good advance warning. But all your other stuff, your cameras, your phones, all that. There's a giant charging station, and there's internet in all the main um, dining tents. Okay. Yeah. On that, on that point, on that point, Joyce, um, uh, the U.S. charger won't gonna work there, so you have to buy a uh, European adapter in order to um, to use on the charger there. So they use like the three prongs. Yeah, the plug adapter. You do need that. Okay, yeah, so, so if one. I have one from like going to Switzerland or something, like if, uh, if it's it got multiple plugs, I, I guess I'd have to check to see which Make one. sure it goes to uh, North Africa, that's all, that, you okay. know, Northeast or East Africa. Because some then, Africa has, I, I forget the plug in Africa. Is it European, Alan? It's not. European, Chad, it European. Is European. Okay, it is European. Yeah. It's not so, British though, right? Was it British or is it? Uh, in, a, in a European, any country, I think you can use it. Not no, in Ireland not was America. different yeah. than the rest. Of, Ireland was different than the rest of Europe. Yeah, it can be different. Like the, Brit England's uh, uh, different from the rest England. of Europe. England, British. It's like England. Yeah, yeah, because usually I know in South Africa is like England too, because it used to be a British colony. Yeah. So their plugs are all yeah. like England, which are those big fat three prong plug things. But we'll yeah. find yeah. that out yeah. for you before you go. I'll make yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. And then, then you can also do the USB in there if, because they have USB ports. So if you just have correct. that, you can charge with your USB. Okay. Um, and then like, you know, I realize we're traveling around. Um, how close are we? Like if someone has, I don't know, a medical emergency to get to, you know, like a doctor or a hospital or whatever. So uh, there are some um, lodges around. And then, uh, and each lodge has they has doctor. So if something happened, uh, we try to find the nearest uh, uh, lodge, and then we call, and then somebody maybe need uh, image, uh, image, uh, um, medical uh, support or help. So they'll be able to um, either we bring you over there, or they'll come to the campsite. But most lodges has uh, most lodges has doctors. It's like okay. like like the Four Seasons. I mean, there's Four a seasons. huge oh, yeah. Four Seasons Lodge yeah. right not far, you know, right within the area. So they have all those facilities, but they're not tented. So, you know, they're, diff they're okay. different, but they, but you can, they help each other. There's also airports in the Serengeti too, if you have to be fly flown out. Um, there's two, right? Isn't there, or is there more than two, Alan? There's at least two airports. Yeah, there's uh, Sorry, actually yeah. three. There's one in, in Central, okay. Central, and then there's another one in North, and then I believe there's another one in South, part of yeah. Serengeti. So if you and have those to, are little, little yeah. airstrips. They're yeah. airstrips. If you have to be airlifted, you can be airlifted out. A lot of people fly in, like I had a client that stayed at the Four Seasons. She flew into one of those little airports and then they picked Ceronera. her up. Ceronera, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you okay. can fly and we don't, we drive. So you're, you are driving more, but you see way more of the country and way more of the people and the local life, which I like a lot. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? So when we're, when you're driving, um, are we taking our luggage? Cause are we on these Jeeps or do you always go to a base first, a home base first? Uh, we take our luggage with us. Um, oh, you talk about the game drive, or yeah, because you just said we're covering more turf, but is that from different tent um, lodges? Well, we so so, uh, yeah. is... so, so when we... we do our game drive, we leave all our pack on your tent. You leave everything. You just grab maybe your day pack to uh, carry like a small item like. Uh, binoculars, camera, your, your uh, passport always, you have to travel with your passport all the time. If you have money, you have to carry your money all the time. You can't leave um, 
um, you are very expensive belonging in, in, in a camp, even though uh, it's safe, but uh, we don't recommend uh, you to leave your passport or your other travel information in your in your in your camp say oh lord you, you always have your day pack that you carry all the time and then yeah. i'm talking about the big day pack i'm talking about a small day pack like maybe um uh maybe a, a, a 20 or 25 millimeter i mean uh, liters i mean so it's okay. not, yeah, like a, back, a little backpack like yeah, yeah, a little bit. A day pack. A smaller I one. Know, different day pack. Day yeah. pack. But your luggage yeah. is transported from, when we change a park, like go from Tarangiri to Norangoro, then you yes. pack yeah. up your luggage and we take it in the Jeep. You're in the same Jeep, yeah. but we take your oh, luggage. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. I didn't and then, do. Yeah. And then you works. get to the next Jeep. I mean, we just put, put them in the back of the Jeep. The Jeep has a luggage area in the back. And then the, and then the porters will come and take them and bring them into the next camp into your room and then you leave them, you know, then you use your day pack while you're there. And we stay several days in each place. So you're move, you're not moving like constantly. You're moving okay, and that's not part of the game drive. Okay. No, Very no, no, no. Okay. No, like the sit and get you have three nights there. So uh, we don't have to move any of your luggages because you we're gonna be driving and go back to the camp driving. Unless, like what Lorraine said, if we going, we moving to another national park. Yeah, we we, we definitely move with your our luggage. But, but you tell us that the night before, right? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, so you have to. We'll say we're packing up in the morning. Every night, every night at dinner, um, Alan and Frank, the other guide, they'll talk to you about what do you want to do tomorrow. Like, what are there certain animals you're trying to see? Are there like we we were fascinated we didn't ever realize how many birds there were how many varieties of birds so we just started getting fascinated and the group made a huge list and we saw something like 86 species of birds or something by the time we wow. left but we because we had no idea but we um we you talk about that in the evening over dinner and kind of say you know they'll say things like would you like to go see the hippos in the water tomorrow? We haven't seen them yet. Or, you know, do you want to like search for a leopard? You know, and they'll make suggestions and then you, you know, the group decides what they want to do. And everybody kind yeah. of chit chats and talks. And then, you know, then we decide also, do you want a full day? Do you want a half day? And then we can tell them that we want lunch for the next day if we want to go. Sometimes we would get up really early in the morning and say, we want to go out while it's like still darkish. And, oh, um, watch the sunrise? That would be yeah. amazing. And oh, then that we, would be amazing. So we yeah. did that and then we came back for breakfast. And then we had breakfast. Then we went back out. So we did that some mornings if we wanted to get up really early. So, so by yeah. seeing a full day, that, that's an answer to do you want to search for leopards or see hippos in the water and you say all of the above so that means you just then you do, yeah. then you're all yeah. day <laughs> then you're an all day got it yeah and that's what's so great about working with alan because you do not have that option when you go right. to like a, a bigger store company they they do two drives a day and that's that and they know where they're taking you you know and they you know it's different we we're a little more loosey goosey that way, you know. Yeah. But it's well, there's no, it it no fun. Yeah. so much fun. <laughs> so do you um do you provide like a packing list and then um yes from a luggage standpoint, okay. like is there a certain I mean, I realize they have a luggage part of the Jeep, but uh, I'm assuming you know you, you probably have to keep your luggage fairly small. Yeah, we we prefer you to use like um uh, if you use a roller bag, you know, which most people have a roller bag, no, not one of those big giant ones, you know, the ones that, that go in the overhead bin, and then there's like one size up from that, maybe it's like an inch bigger or two inches bigger, that's about the maximum. I think that's a yeah. 27 uh -huh. where the, the giant ones are 31, 32. Yeah, we, we don't want Near those 30. because we can't fit not them all, all in. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, um, uh, we usually recommend, you know, like the uh, uh, L.O. Bean duffel bag, the uh, medium size. Yeah. Yeah, duffel bag are the best because we have um, the 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 place where we pack those luggage. If you bring the one with the wheel, it's not really going to work very good because we can't pack, um, 
very uh, nicely. So we recommend those with no wheels. And then the uh, LB duffel bag, uh, the the good one, best one, they work better. Yeah. I mean, we usually people bring a mixture and we deal with it. But if you bring big bags, that is a real, it's a nightmare. To, to get okay. Them. But I, I mean, you, you would specify in the packing list, you know, keep your luggage under yeah. such and yeah. such. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll give you dimensions. Hey, so we can wash out if it's going to be really hot and you're trying to keep luggage to a minimum that we do have facility to wash stuff out and hang it in yeah, our rooms. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we all wash like our safari pants because those dry in like 10 minutes, you know. So well, often we each had like two pairs maybe and we would just wash them and hang them in our bathroom on the rack that that this little rack thing here and then, you know, in, overnight and the next morning they were completely dry and we could just start again. So minimal packing is always better. You're not going anywhere fancy, so you don't need yeah. any touch up clothes. But that was also the dry season. We're gonna, isn't February yeah. gonna be hotter and more humid? It'll be hot, yes, it will be hotter and more hum, you know, more water. But still, I mean, you don't need any dressy clothes or anything, so you can usually pack pretty, pretty light. Yeah, we'll, we'll send you a, a parking list when 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 that time uh, arrives, and and also uh, on the airline you require I think you're required to have two duffel bags, and um, you can either use both. And uh, I think some people they bring two because once they get there they usually shop a lot of souvenir, bring presents to their family, so they use another extra bag to do that so you're allowed to have to do that big smaller one yeah yeah we don't do a lot of shopping but we do some <laughs> you know whatever people want but we don't usually spend a lot of time doing that yeah. sherry you're the only one left <laughs> no i'm here too oh you're still there yeah, you no, dropped I, off my screen. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh good. Okay. Right. So, so I guess I mean I, we would just have to. I mean, if it's February, it's going to be winter here. So we would still need a a decent coat to sort of get there, but we wouldn't be using it because once we get there, it's, it's yeah. But warm. maybe do like what I do when I'm traveling in the winter somewhere warm. I use like a fleece kind of jacket. Yeah. Because that way. That you can, you know, there's, or those, um, you know, those, those lightweight, um, like ski well, jackets well, that they have now yeah. that you can put in the little box, the little teeny, right, uh, right, the stuff, the, the stuffable like down jackets and those stuff. are phenomenal to have because then no matter what the weather is, you can, you know, you can pull them out and use them. So something okay. like that is good. Okay. But yeah, yeah, that's always hard because you don't really want a big coat, you know. That you're lugging around. Yeah. No, uh, 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 the fleets are the best, especially uh, on, on Gorongoro, where uh, we'll stay there one night, maybe two. It's cold because it's in the highland, in a, in a high elevation. So usually uh, places uh, with high elevation tend to be cold. And uh, so, especially during uh, uh, early when we were doing game drive at night. So uh, you have to uh, have some warm clothes there in, in Gorongoro, regardless of the season, it constantly stay uh, cold all the time in Gorongoro because of high, high, high elevation. That's why those jackets are so great. People bring them on big, I, I asked for one for Christmas because I'm like, everybody always has them on these trips I go on and they always are comfortable because those, they fold what up. What are you back. saying? I, I oh. missed, you cut, you cut out what you were saying. Those little, um, those those um, down jackets that fit in the little pouch um, that that are very popular right now, they're fantastic. No matter where you go in the world, because they're they're not too hot, so you can wear them in like mild, cool weather. But you can wear them if it gets cold. Um, because you, like Alan was saying, when you're in Nuranguro and you get up early in the morning, we had, you know, we had hats and gloves for the early morning because it was chilly because it was only 6 a.m. or something, you know.
but then by that's, that's good to know because i wouldn't have thought to pack that stuff yep. yeah by by 10 well we'll put that on your packing list but by 10 o'clock you know you're in a t-shirt so but in the early morning it was pretty chilly and in the evenings too when you're sitting around the campfire or doing whatever you're doing um you know you it might be chillier uh, in certain parts like in norangoro norangoro is the giant extinct volcano crater that's why it's so unique you're down inside this crater and um it's always lush and green and grassy there and cool you, you can't go you can't go to tanzania without visiting gorongoro and serengeti <laughs> yeah yeah other questions ladies thank you very much Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Let me know if you have any other questions and you know, we'll get your answers. And Sherry, thank you for being so patient with me. I'm really oh, no. like, oh no my problem. gosh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> I've never no done problem. that. <laughs> I think my, my whole routine is off because I don't have, I'm not booking like I'm a normal, like my normal life is a regular booking life and I work 10 hours a day and I'm sitting at my desk all the time. but. Now I'm kind of more in and out. I get a little more discombobulated. So I'm really sorry. Not a problem. Um, yeah, well, I'll probably set something up with you for Monday because I have a couple of new appointments that I have to do tomorrow. But um, okay. with any other questions I had that I didn't want to bog the group down with. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Just let Thank me you. know. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. And thanks for staying on for so long. <laughs> we appreciate it. Out of interest, not, not a modification. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. All Thank right. you, Grace. Thank Come you on. all. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Bye.